Diabetes Connections is brought to you by the only ultra-rapid-acting inhaled insulin, by Omnipod 5, the only tubeless pump that integrates with Dexcom G6, and by Dexcom G7, the number one covered CGM brand. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. This week, figuring out which diabetes devices you want to use is hard enough, but then you have to navigate insurance. There's a new effort to streamline the process, a platform called Diabetes Wise. It's free for patients and providers. The person doesn't have to call their insurance. The provider doesn't have to think about it. If there is prior authorization that's needed, they know we have all the links, we have all the information. And so we really think that it can simplify the process. That's Corey Hood, the founder of Diabetes Wise. He lives with type 1. We've talked about Diabetes Wise before, but this insurance option is new. We talk specifics about how it can help, who it's for, and what else Corey has in store for the platform. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. Welcome to another week of the show. I am always so glad to have you here. You know we aim to educate and inspire about diabetes with a focus on people who use insulin. We have been through several technology updates and upgrades in the 16 and a half years that Benny has had type 1. My son was diagnosed in 2006, right before he turned 2. My husband has type 2 diabetes, so now he uses a CGM. So we're going through a lot of insurance issues and ordering issues for him as well. And, you know, there's just so many hoops to jump through to make sure you're getting something that works for you or your child or your husband, and also that your insurance will cover. We've talked to Corey Hood before about Diabetes Wise, but they have added this new feature, and I think it is well worth a revisit. So quick refresher, back in 2020, I called Diabetes Wise a consumer reports for diabetes. They have real people, real reviews, quizzes that you can take to see what diabetes technology might work best for you. And last year, they added a pro side for healthcare teams. Now they've added insurance plans. So you can see if what you like is what you can get without paying a fortune. Dr. Corey Hood is a licensed clinical psychologist. He is part of the diabetes care team at Stanford. He was diagnosed with type 1 as an adult. And we did this interview at ADA Scientific Sessions in person back in June. And you'll hear it right after this. For many of you, as you listen, this is going to sound like a weird question. Why do you use the insulin pump you've got on right now? There's a really good chance you went on that pump 15 or 20 years ago because it's what your doctor had back then and you've never really thought about changing. I mean, that was us until Benny's Pump Company went out of business. And I was amazed at how much things had changed. That's what happens when you look for a new one. I'm telling you, it is time to take advantage of what's new. If you need a sign to switch, this is it. Omnipod 5, the tubeless automated insulin delivery system, is here and it's available through the pharmacy, which means that you can try it today, even if your tubed pump is under warranty. Fill out the quick online form, see if you're eligible. You can find that at diabetes-connections.com. Click on the Omnipod logo. For full safety risk information and free trial terms and conditions, visit omnipod.com slash diabetes connections. Corey, welcome back to Diabetes Connections. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, and as as people listen, we are in an open space here at ADA, so I'm sure there's going to be some noise. I hope that doesn't throw you at all no, during the interview. Totally fine. And yeah. you know, as you listen, we apologize for any of the background noise, but we do what we can. Yeah. When the media room is booked. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and also at a bustling conference of what, like 12,000, 13,000 people, this it's hard to find a quiet space. But it's great to catch up with so many people here, including yourself. Give us an update on Diabetes Wise, what's different, what's new, and, and how it's going. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's nice to, um, to have a chance to, to talk again and to kind of give you some updates on. So I think that the biggest updates, and we're exhibiting here and we're continuing to do different things, but the, um, the biggest update is that we finished our prescription tool which is on the pro site, so for healthcare providers, but people with diabetes, anybody can access it, it's all free. But what you can do on there is, it's a simple design where you put in a couple of inputs, the device you're interested in, where you live, the insurance you have, or if you have Medicaid, Medicare, whatever it is, and then you push a button and it spits out 
what kind of coverage your insurance has for that specific device, whether you need prior authorization, and then who um, provides the device for you, whether it's a you know a DME company or a pharmacy. And so it summarizes all of that. It gives you the information right there. And so we really are trying to simplify the prescription process because we've heard from um, many different diabetes care providers and those in primary care that when they're trying to get their patients on devices, you know, they run into a lot of barriers with prior authorization, coverage, and so we're trying to simplify it. Um, And we think we have a pretty good tool that helps people do that. So just to be clear, even with commercial insurance, I say, I'm going to make something up. I have Blue Cross Blue Shield Local Charlotte, You're right, or, right. which is not an existing insurance company, but something like that. And I plug that in, and it really comes up with right. the devices. Yeah. There's a drop-down menu of um, all the different devices that are on there. So all the CGM, all the insulin delivery, all the closed-loop systems, meters, syringes, all of those kind of things are on there. Um, and then you can just, you know, it's a smart uh, entry text, so you can put in, you know, BC, BS, Charlotte, or whatever it might be. Once you do that, um, it it gives you that information. And so there are over, there are probably two or 3,000 plans that are in the system. And the way that we were able to do this is that we worked, and sorry for the beep, the, I'm on um, on insulin suspend on my loop because uh, <laughs> I was heading low walking over. So, um, Anytime you need to take a break, yeah. we're, we're near the media room, we have snacks, I can yeah. run and grab. That's what, I've got my lemonade All with right. me All just right. in case. But, um, <laughs> but what we partnered with a company called Policy Reporter, and they've partner or they have contracts with all the different payers to pull in um, all of their claims. And so we're able to extract that data for diabetes devices and then it gives us all this great information. And so the person doesn't have to call their insurance. The provider doesn't have to think about it. If there is prior authorization that's needed, they know we have all the links, we have all the information. And so we really think that it can simplify the process. You know, there's so many barriers to getting people on devices. Hopefully this cuts through one of the big ones. I mean, you said yourself that two to 3,000 yep. different insurance companies, and I'm sure within those there are different policies. Yeah, exactly. I'm curious, like, what you learned about them along yeah. the way. Yeah, it's a great question. It's, you know, I think that what we heard consistently from people with diabetes and then also stakeholders, you know, whether they're the providers or just people who are helping people get on, you know, advocacy groups, whatever, whoever it might be, you know, they're like, it would be nice to have a place where you could just put in your insurance and it would tell you if you, if you're covered by, you know, for a certain device. And we're like, yeah, that's a good idea. And so, (laughs) so then, then it got to the point where we had to figure out how to do it in a somewhat, reasonable financial way and so I think that you know we have support for um, diabetes wise from the Helmsley Charitable Trust which helps tremendously and you know and so I think that you know we we figured out a way for them to share we have to have a subscription with Policy Reporter they share the data with us and then we turn it into um, kind of a user design that is easy, you know, user experience that's, that's easy because you don't want to click through like PDFs of yeah. like how you're, you know, you want to know, is this covered? What do I have to do to get it? And who am I going to have to bug to send it to me? So, yeah, we've all, we all have stories, yeah. right? Of you, you've called the insurance company, they've given you one answer. You've called your doctor, they have another. The pump company has another. You know, even the medical supply company may have another. Right. Did you run into contradictory or any problems with that? I mean, I hate to say, is this reliable? Yeah. But the whole system's just so complicated and... and Absolutely. And, snang- you know, tangled all up. Right, right. No, no, we did. And I think that in some of our... So, in some of our early passes, we would check certain devices and we would, we would talk to... Um, the different device companies and say, for example, Tandem, you know, your control IQ is coming back as covered in this way. Is this what you understand it to be? Um, Abbott, is this what you understand? So the companies were really helpful in confirming some of the information. And um, whenever there were problems, we could identify where the, where, the, where the gap was in the information that we had. The other thing that we do is that we're doing 
because this is relatively new, we're doing monthly updates of it. So we bring in new payers, we bring in new information. You know, take a good example is the Dexcom G7 that's relatively, you know, more and more people are going on it, but the payer plans don't reflect it necessarily because you know, it takes a little while for the claims to come through and all that. And so we're just now seeing that we have more information and more reliable information on the G7 versus just general Dexcom products. So, Diabetes-wise is not an, an industry right. website, right? This is independent. Have you had pressure? Like, are, you, are there people that really would like to either, not necessarily buy you, but who would yeah. like to control more of you? I don't know if that's well, okay to ask. No, I think it's no, it, and I think that this leads to one of the things that we've been thinking a lot about lately, and that Helmsley has pushed us to think about is how do you make this sustainable? Yeah. Because we love working with Helmsley, and we have a lot of it's it's more of a collaborative experience with them, and not just like here are the funds, but they help us understand you know how to grow and connect us with people. But at the end of the day, you know they can't support this forever, and so how do we do that? How do we stay neutral, unbiased, and free for people with diabetes and clinicians that want to use this, but also have it be sustainable? And I think that one of the th- one of the ways that we're thinking about it is, you know, to not ever get into the space where there are ads or that there's a way to control it. Although that that's an important, you know, I know that that that's good for a lot of people, but it starts to make us feel a little bit like if you know if we're recommending Dexcom and then there's an ad that pops up, hey, you should try this. So what we we think is maybe collaborating with these groups to, with with industry to do, you know, specific things related to their products um, where we have an idea about this might be a good way for people to start on Dexcom that may not be the way that you think about it or you push it, but this is what we're hearing. This is what our experience is. And, and so I think that we can still do that and remain, you know, unbiased, but it's going to be tricky. And I think that, but, but to your question about, um, you know, really, I think the companies like that there's some exposure, our information is accurate and we go to them if we feel like, this may be inaccurate, or can you double check this for us? Um, and we're we're trying not to trash, you know, companies and all those kind of things. I mean, we our goal at the end of the day is just to get more, get better access for people to get on these devices. We know the devices work. We know there can be challenges with them, but we just want more people to use them because it, it helps. Have the insurers had anything to say about this? Afreza is the only FDA-approved mealtime insulin that comes in a powder you inhale through your lungs. So why should you consider this unique alternative to mealtime injections? Well, Afreza is another option. If you want to lower your use of needles or if you're experiencing skin reactions at your injection sites, and it's ultra-rapid acting, so you can take it right when your food arrives, even unexpectedly. Find out more, see if Afreza is right for you. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Afreza logo. Afreza can cause serious side effects, including sudden lung problems and low potassium. It is not for patients with chronic lung disease, such as asthma or COPD, or for patients allergic to insulin. Tell your doctor if you ever smoked, if you ever had kidney or liver problems, a history of lung cancer, or if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Most common side effects are low blood sugar, cough, and sore throat. Severe low blood sugar can be fatal. Do not replace long-acting insulin with Afreza. Afreza is not for use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. Please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning medication guide and instructions for use on afreza.com safety. Now back to my conversation with Corey. I was asking him about what he's heard from the insurance companies on this. They haven't. Um, but I wonder if they will eventually as we do, as there's more traffic to the prescription tool. I mean, yeah. it really was just launched in March and April um, and refined and all of that. And so I think we're still a little too early to see complaints um, so, but we we will eventually have some. Yeah. So it's so interesting because you think. I mean, I don't know the insurance business very well. Yeah. It seems like this this ridiculously complicated, very moneyed. Like they have so much money, they have made so much money, and and very protective of its self industry. I don't know if that's accurate or fair, but that's how I see it. Yeah. No, I think it is. It's a, and it's a different source of it, it's income that uh, or it's it's money that's generated in a different way. Yeah. Um, and I think that but but if we don't if we're not 
um, knowledgeable about what's going on in that space and what they're covering and how quickly they might change coverage. You know, I think that that's the tricky part is is more so just keeping up with the changes because one of the big shifts that we've seen over the last couple of years is a movement away from the DME space to more coverage by the pharmacy benefit. And it makes it easier and providers like it in general. And But it also can confuse people who are always with you know, Edge Park, for example, or whoever it was. And moving from there to pharmacy is not as simple. And then you have to have interactions with pharmacists that um, usually I, I find to be usually helpful, but they also are bombarded now by a lot of these kind of things that they're not so aware of. So it's a, it's a changing landscape. So I think it's less about maybe money and funds just like confusing people. I don't yeah. think that they're intentionally doing it, but there's a lot of confused people out there. Yeah, I'm, I so, have been one of them yeah, on many, oh, for many sure. occasions. <laughs> Especially, it's interesting, when we, we were switched on Dexcom from a medical supply company to pharmacy, um, and we were not notified, I found out because I was talking to my pharmacist, yeah. and he recommended we run it, and it was like, oh my gosh, it's so much less. It was it was yeah. just really, we have a very good relationship with our pharmacist, which I, as you listen, I encourage you, get yeah. to know your pharmacist. They are fabulous yeah. most of the time and they can really help. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of pharmacists, I think that there's an effort to help, to, to give pharmacists more um, prescribing ability around oh, yeah. CGM. And I think it would be great to be able to say, you know, to go to them and, you know, the, the, there's just a number of things that we, we um, I don't know if it's protective or whatever it is, but I think that giving them more ability to do that would help so much. And um, but then but then it's another group of providers that we need to help educate yeah. and, and get information. But, you know, the um, I've had some conversations with pharmacists where they say exactly that. Well, let's run it this way. And then it comes back and they're like, well, let's try it this way or with this device and see what happens. And I think that it's not, I, I don't, there's something maybe a, a bit frown, uh, frowned upon, you know, within like the providers about doing that, but it's such an effective tool. And I think that we had some ideas for the prescription tool that kind of came out of that, those discussions too, where, you know, if you could use this tool and run it and then get some advanced information, take that to your provider, take that to your pharmacist, I think it can be helpful. And this is a little bit off on a tangent, but I think the big difference for most pharmacists is they are standing in front of you yeah. and they want to help you, right? You're running a coupon. It doesn't work. We're going to try it this way. We're going to try it that way. Whereas a doctor or the insurance company they may not have bad intentions, no, but no. they're not they're not right in front of you. Right. They don't have to deal with you. Right. So the pharmacist is like, oh, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to try to save you some money. Yeah. That's great. No, and, and you're right. If they don't have, uh, if a provider is sitting with a person with diabetes and they can push a button and make it happen, make the prescription yeah. go through, that that works well. But many times, like you said, it's not that. And it's that they, they send in a prescription and then it's a few days later and it hasn't come through. And so then you're no longer in front of them. Right. You're no longer able to kind of get their attention and it's tricky and you might have, I mean, I have the experience of, you know, trying to get a device covered and, you know, if it's the annual review of it, if it's a medication and then trying to track down the provider to do it is tricky. It's, um, even if I can, you know, message one of them, it takes multiple efforts to get that. And you know, so hopefully we can streamline that a bit with this with this process. We can circle back and talk more about diabetes wise. But while I have you, Corey, I wanted to ask you years ago, we talked about the mental load yeah. of wearing devices. And I, I'm always happy that you brought that up and that you're willing to talk about it. Um, is it something that you still follow? Do you still kind of talk about that to people? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's and it's one of those things that's that's not going to go away. Yeah. It's it's never going to go away. And I think that so what we've tried to do on Diabetes Wise um, in a, in a couple of ways is well, I'll bring it back to Diabetes Wise sure. and then talk a little bit more generally about it. But you know, we tried to have stories, you know, on our wisdom section of what people experience on the mental burden or the mental load, because, you know, it's, it, it's naive to, to tell people, or maybe it's even bad practice to tell people, 
that you're not going to ever experience this. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be upfront about it. We want to talk about it. I was in one of the presentations yesterday about just how, I don't know what the right word is, but how common you know, diabetes distresses. And it wasn't specific to devices, but it was a conversation about, you know, everybody's going to have this. And, but it's not going to be at every moment. It's not going to be some people, it's going to be a week and some people it's going to be longer. But I think that the device distress um, is also one of those things that happens, but it's not going to happen all the time. It's going to be one of those things that, that comes up. And so I think on, we have some ideas of ways that we can help people with that. Uh, one is uh, making them aware that it's going to happen. Um, and then when it does happen, what are some things you can do about it? Um, and that might be taking a, a few day break from whatever the device is that's bothering you, if that's possible. It might be that you reach out to a, kind of a support group that, that talks through this and that you just need a little bit of complaining time, you know, and that can be really helpful. Um, there may be things that you're doing that are kind of user errors and maybe there's a site that tells you hey try this instead or use this or maybe your alarms are set a little bit too in a more sensitive way that if you loosened it up a little bit you might not be so burdened by it but i do think that it's common everybody's going to have that it's just not going to happen all at the same time and so prepping people for it i think is really the way to do it yeah I wonder, too, with the AID systems, and I'll just I'll throw my son under the bus because he's a good example of this kind of stuff. You know, you, back in the day before he had an automated system, he might go for longer, like between Dexcom sensors, right? He's like, ah, whatever, I'll, I'll change that when I feel like it. Yeah, yeah. But I know now that he relies on his system very much, and he very rarely will go for more than, you know, the two-hour warm-up. Yeah. With between Dexcoms, which is relatively new for him. You know, he would sometimes be like, I'm going to wait a couple days even yeah. in the past. But he really relies on the system. And I wonder sometimes, like, for people like that, it's it's a wonderful thing to have an AID system. But it's almost a little bit more of something to think about because he is never without those devices yeah. now. Yeah. Right. I mean, he doesn't want to be, but it's still stressful. Right. Right. And I think that, you know, one of the things that maybe people were concerned about maybe de-skilling or, you know, if you put somebody on AID and then they, all they have to do is, you know, occasionally check things and they have to do this. And I, and they were concerned that people wouldn't know what to do when they weren't on yeah, the yeah, technology yes, or on the devices. And I think that in retrospect, none of the systems work so well that you can just completely disengage with it. They just don't. Yeah. Um, and I think that there are great systems out there, great data on it. I, you know, I use Loop and I really happy with it and have tried all the other ones. I just think that it's just not like that. And so there's always going to be some extra burden and extra thing. And I think what's tricky is that they do work really well. And in those moments where there's connectivity issues, there's a startup, there's a thing you, we have to, the, the people come back to a little bit of anxiety about what's coming on, you know, some worries in the moment of going low and like having to check extra times. I know that it, when I'm in that warm up period, I check with finger sticks multiple times and that's not an easy thing. You know, if you've not been carrying your meter around with you, you know, to track it down and to do those things. So I do think that there's some um, extra prep that we can, we can provide people in those moments of, you know, what are you going to do as kind of a interim you know, solution for taking care of it. So since you started diabetes wise, have you seen anything change in how people talk about the devices? I mean, I'm trying to think of the timeline. You, you kind of came out with this, at least public facing yeah. kind of as all the AID systems were coming out. Yeah. So I'm wondering like, have your reviews changed as people, how people interact with the technology? Yeah. Has it changed? I think that, I think that it has, I think that I've seen it more so with the kind of accuracy and comfort of CGM. And so some of the things that have happened, I would say, even, you know, we launched Diabetes Wise in mid 2019. So it's been out for about four years. And then the, the professional side has only been out, you know, maybe six months in a, in a, a really uh, robust way, I think, with the prescription tool and all of those kind of things. So, but I do think that 
it's absolutely the case that this, the experience that people have had with CGM is is different now. And I think that, I mean, even when we're talking about a few years later, it's not so much that the AID systems are necessarily better or more accurate or more perfect than they were. It's just that there are more of them. And so I think that people have more choice now and, you know, in theory have more choice, you know, depending on what the teams recommend or what their insurance kind of pushes them to. But the landscape is growing. And I think it's really what's nice is that it does give people options. And I can't say that one is better than the other. I can say that automation is better than not automation, you know, than than manual for, for many people. And so I think that getting on a system, but also understanding that it's not fully automated and it's not fully closed loop and that in those situations, you still have to be paying attention. So I think that we're seeing more, sometimes we're seeing a few more comments about, I expected this to be a little bit easier Mm. or to do more on their own, but you still have to be engaged. You still have to take care of things. What was happening right away where people were talking about how they could sleep through the night or that they would wake up with uh, 100 blood sugar and how nice that was. And I still experience that. And I think a lot of people do. So as these kind of new users come on, I think that they still experience those those things early. And that's what shows them value and wants to keep them on it. And then it's, you know, how do you figure out ways to continue to make them feel like there's value to using it and maybe then it's doing physical activity and knowing that a certain device might be better suited for what you want to do or what your lifestyle is than another one a system that has some data on exercise or physical activity maybe is more desirable to some than than others and so i think that trying to kind of figure out that lifestyle piece i think we'll find what we probably need to do with Diabetes Wise is continue to add new stories and new wisdom and maybe like talking about your son and thinking about college experiences and thinking about all of those kind of things. I mean, there's a lot of people that have a new experience that maybe they can, going to college on an AID system, you know, starting a new job on it. You know, there's just a lot of these kind of things that I think we can continue to improve like the I guess how comprehensive we have some experiences yeah. for people. And, and Diabetes Wise does cover or show yeah. pens as a choice. Anything different there or anything I, that you found? That's one of the things that I actually think is, I guess I would say that we, we struggled a little bit with understanding where to put kind of smart pens or connected yeah. care or, you know, those, those systems. And right now I would say there's, you know, three main players in the space, and, you know, with the Bigfoot system, the Tempo kind of connected care system from Lilly, and then, oh, and the N-Pen, obviously, oh, with Metri, yeah. uh, with um, the N-Pen. And I think that those systems are great and and that they offer, it's not so much that they target a different group, but I think a different group of people is going to use them than maybe some of the kind of automated insulin delivery systems. And people that are on MDI and feel really, really comfortable with it, people who are new to diabetes, maybe the, the kind of a different type two space. Um, but I think that they're really great systems. And one of the things that we struggled with was knowing exactly where to put them on the platform because they didn't exactly fit some of these other places. And they're more than just kind of a, a smart pen. They offer a lot through their apps and their programming. And so what we're working on is building out kind of a consolidated or a separate section from AID, from insulin delivery, from CGM that is just about them. So these kind of three main, there's smart pen systems, yeah. you know, I don't know exactly <laughs> exactly how to call them, but, right, right. but I think that they, and I think that that's a space that is going to grow a lot and you're going to see more, you know, probably companies playing in that space because it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of people who feel really comfortable with using CGM and using injections. And that's a, an important group that maybe isn't always represented on some of the platforms. So, Yeah, before I let you go, Corey, how are you doing? I've been talking to you for a long time. Yeah, yeah. 
No, it's, you know, th- th- thanks for asking. You know, I think I'm doing really well. I think that, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't always uh, believe that when I say it. No, no, but I am doing well. And I think that the, um, you know, w- one of the things that I think helps and not trying to sell anything, but, you know, having these devices and, you know, I've had the first couple of days here at ADA as an example, I had really nice blood sugars and like the systems were working and whatever I was doing was working well. And then the last like 36 hours, it's been crazy. And I, and I don't exactly know why, maybe there are certain reasons, maybe like a pod, you know, issue or whatever. But I think that for me, how I'm doing, there's always a pretty nice connection to how well diabetes is going because Mm -hmm. I feel better if it's in range. I engage more. I do more things. I feel better about exercising, things like that. So, you know, as much as I like diabetes to just kind of be uh, in the sidecar, sometimes it's like driving, Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but no, but thanks for asking. I am doing well. Um, You know, we've, uh, from a professional standpoint, thinking about, um, you know, beside, beyond diabetes, why is just continuing to think about the mental health needs of people with diabetes and what more we can do for them and how we can get more services to them, I think is one of the other kind of, you know, passion projects that sure. we want to keep working on. Well, we need it. So thank you. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> thank you so much for joining yeah, me. Thanks for having me. You got it. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. More information about Diabetes Wise in the show notes. Go to diabetes-connections.com. I'll link up our past interviews about Diabetes Wise. And I'll also link up one of the conversations I had about Corey. We alluded to it about the mental load of diabetes technology. I think everybody with diabetes, especially parents, I got to say I'm a little biased on this one. I think it's really important for parents to understand that the technology, you know, is wonderful, of course, but there is a mental burden to it that they might, may not even know even in young children. So it doesn't mean stop using it. It just means recognize it, think it through. And if, you, if you're the person with diabetes, acknowledge it. You know, really taking a couple of moments to think about this, as Corey says, uh, can really do a lot for your mental health. So I'll link that up too. Okay, up next, wins and fails. When I think about our family's use of CGM and Dexcom, it is getting harder and harder to remember how we did things before. I mean, truly, how did we manage when Benny needed something like 10 finger sticks a day when he was a toddler. We thought it was amazing to switch to Dexcom CGM when it needed to be calibrated twice a day. Do you remember that? Well, now the Dexcom G6 eliminates finger sticks for calibration and diabetes treatment decisions. We love the alerts and alarms and that we can change them for both him and for us as we follow. A lot has changed. I mean, Benny has grown from a toddler with type 1 to going to college this week. Dexcom Share and Follow has let us give him more and more independence. If your glucose alerts and readings from the G6 do not match symptoms or expectations, use a blood glucose meter to make diabetes treatment decisions. Learn more. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. Let's talk about this week's wins and fails. My win for this week comes from Diabetes Canada. Well, really, this is a win from the We Are Not Waiting community. Kate Farnsworth tweeted about this the other day, saying, thrilled to be able to share the Canadian physician statement on DIYAID. Very grateful to be part of this essential work and hope it will help those interested in this technology. This is a position paper in the Canadian Journal of Diabetes titled, Do-It-Yourself Automated Insulin Delivery, a Position Statement. And what's really nice about this, and we'll get into what the paper says in just a moment, it starts out by acknowledging that this kind of position statement is only possible, and I'm quoting here, because of the pioneering work of individuals living with diabetes and their loved ones who founded the We Are Not Waiting movement by believing in the power of possibility and being willing to pay it forward. Their work has been instrumental in propelling the field of automated insulin delivery forward. And Kate Farnsworth and many, many more people have been a big part of that. So kudos to them. The paper basically talks about respecting the desires and wishes of people with diabetes and making sure that they can work with their care team to find solutions that work best for them. And the paper goes on to include guidance on the use of do-it-yourself AID systems like Loop, OpenAPS, and Android APS. And I will link it up. You can read it yourself. It is the kind of thing that when I started this podcast in 2015 would have seemed absolutely unthinkable. So congrats to everybody involved. This is so important for healthcare providers to see so they can give this kind of great information to their patients. 
And my fail this week is something that happened a couple of weeks ago, but I think it's worth talking about. This was the Freestyle Libre Link app situation in the UK. An update had caused it to stop working on some Apple devices. People woke up and saw a completely blank screen. You know, you can imagine you think it's your sensor or your system, but no, it was system-wide. Abbott thanked everybody for their patience while they fixed the issue. They sincerely apologized. This was a statement they gave to the BBC. They sent out letters to care providers with advice for patients and also to patients. Apparently, some people were trying to delete and then reinstall the app, but then it was taken off of the App Store completely. So, you know, people were relying on finger sticks until it was back. They have updated it. There were improvements made and it is back in the App Store. It is also worth noting that everybody with type 1 diabetes in NHS England, their healthcare system, has access to a CGM. And that is different. It's standard of care now. It was not just four or five years ago. And as you can imagine, um, the uptake of you know, people getting this device now that it is paid for has been pretty remarkable. It also meant that with a situation like this, more people than would have in years past were affected. As this episode goes live, my family is driving Benny to college. Yes, this is drop-off week. So if you see me on social media, give me a virtual hug. Give me an attaboy. Tell me I can do it. I know Benny can do it. He's totally ready. I'm just not sure that I am. And we did have a conversation before he left. I hope to have that as a podcast episode, maybe as soon as next week, um, but in the, definitely in the near future. I'm going to be participating in some uh, college diabetes network. They're now called the Diabetes Link. I'm going to be participating in some forums with them in the next couple of weeks. So I'll put that in the newsletter when we get it all nailed down and I'll share it on social media as well. I'm excited they asked me to speak, but all I can talk about is the drop-off process pretty much. We haven't experienced much of college yet, but it's all about the prep and how we planned. My husband likes to say the backup plan is more important than the actual plan. So I'm sure the backup plan is, is what will actually wind up happening. All right. Thanks as always to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged. You've worked hard your whole life and diabetes management shouldn't slow you down. Edge Park is your trusted go-to supplier for all things diabetes management supplies and continuous glucose monitors like Medtronic's Guardian Sensor, Dexcom G7, and the Freestyle Libre 3. Edge Park accepts most insurance plans, including select coverage for Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans. And Edge Park navigates insurance complexities for you and handles the paperwork. Go to diabetes-connections.com, click on the Edge Park logo.